Hello everybody, good night, good afternoon, good morning, whatever it might be, it's evening here. Guys, I wanted to explain today what a, a mono carry-on was. I, um, I've heard a lot of people talking about mono carry-ons, die carry-ons, and I don't even want to say some of the other words they use. Uh, so I want to explain this real briefly without going into a lot of detail. The, the life cycle of many fungi is quite elaborate and has sometimes asexual, sexual states, etc., etc., uh, I don't want to get into that. I want to explain exactly what a mono carrion is. Mono means one. Carrion is the I believe, Greek word for nucleus. It means like the kind of chunky stuff. Uh, if you stained a cell, you would see this thing inside called a nucleus. So a mono carrion in the case of fungi is usually something. Uh, it could be loosely, um, I suppose, a, a spore um, that has a single nucleus. But generally, we don't refer to mono carrions. Uh, um, we refer to spores as spores. So if you have a spore here, right? I'm sorry, I'm gonna to try to use the... If you have a single spore, okay, this is what we call a spore. Uh, this is almost always, uh, in most colloquial terms, the result of sexual or meiotic right, division. Okay, I don't want to get into the other mitotic one, but meiotic means sexual, so M-E-I-O, okay? So not mitotic, mitotic is a different thing. We're not talking about mitotic now, that's a whole different video. All right, so what happens is when this mono <laughs> nucleus basically develops what we call a germ, use black, uh, it develops a little, what we call germ tube, what's gonna happen is essentially this is going to start to basically undergo mitotic division and you're going to get a new nucleus and then eventually there's going to be a little septum that forms there etc cetera, etc cetera. it's a little a little more complicated than this but I'm, I'm trying to make this simple you guys so this again is what we call a monocaryon this is a monocaryon one nucleus so again when so if we say mono we just mean, that's shorthand for monokaryotic, okay? So monokaryotic mycelium, right? Or a colony or whatever you wanna call it. So when we're gonna do breeding, that's the point of most discussions that revolve around this, this kind of idea is that when we start to do things like breeding, um, let's see if I can knock my camera over again. Um, you can see I'm precariously preached perched on a box here again. Uh, so if we're doing breeding, essentially what these are equal to are called gametes in the rest of the world of biology. They are referred to as gametes. Another word they use is called haploid. Okay, haploid, another way to write that equals N. So N is shorthand. N essentially means half of the normal diploid amount of genetic material. Okay, so you got that? So if we are diploid, that's 2n. So 2 times n, or just simply 2n. Okay, we have a small problem in fungi. In fungi, we don't really form the diploid um, state until we make a basidium, there's a word. The basidium is where meiosis occurs. Okay. So again, I don't want to draw on a life cycle. You can look that up in your high school biology book. What I want to explain is that when we have gametes or haploid, these are equal to sperm, okay, or pollen, okay? Now, what else do we need when we have a haploid gamete? We need sperm, pollen, or just roughly speaking or kind of generically speaking, a gamete. So we need a, a spore. So again, remember up here, we said those were haploid. So we need something that's N, right? <laughs> In the case of fungi, that's a spore. In the case of humans and other animals, that's sperm or egg. And in the case of plants, that's pollen or an egg. Now here's where people get a little bit confused. We'll come back to that in a second here. When two fungi mate, they essentially do the same thing. So you have, let's just pretend here. Uh, we have, let's say, I've got two little colors here. Um, maybe I'll scoot up a little bit. 
Oh, wait, I'm gonna run out of paper here. So you have your little colony here, do do do, and I'm just gonna pretend um, this is your one. Remember, we have N. So we have one little nucleus in here, and we have maybe another N over here. I wish I had a slightly different color than two kinds of blues, <laughs> but. So these two guys come together, and so remember this is a mono. You could label that mono two, and you could say this is mono one. That's the way I label them. Well, they come together, do 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 do, and they undergo what's called anastomosis and somatogamy. Okay, so that's a fancy word there, anastomosis. And somatogamy. Some people use and they say them different ways. So somatogamy or whatever. Anyway, what do you end up with? You end up with oh n plus n. I'm not gonna draw that. Okay, this is what in the fungi we call a dicaryon. Okay, or dicaryotic. Okay. So we're getting somewhere now. So what we have just done there, and essentially, again, I don't want to make too many analogies because fungi are different. What we have done is we've taken essentially two spores, we've made monocaryons, and then we mated them together. Now the rest of the life cycle, again, that's a whole, that's like another video, and I don't want to get into that now because that's where people start getting confused. But essentially in the basidium, this dicaryon, those two haploid nuclei are going to fuse, they're gonna form a diploid, a 2N, and they are going to undergo meiosis, okay? Now again, go back to your high school biology book to figure that, up, that stuff out. I don't wanna get into that kind of stuff. That's where people usually get lost and it gets really boring. So what we wanna do as hobby mycologists or professional mycologists, we wanna take two of these ends, these haploid gametes, which in our case come in the form of spores that turn into colonies. We wanna take two of these colonies, two of these colonies, put them on a plate, let them come together, maybe subculture that, dicaryon, not a diploid, you guys don't call it a diploid, it's not a diploid yet. Diploid state is right before you undergo meiosis. We're a little bit weird humans, we spend the majority of our life cycle, the human body, 99.9% .9 of it is diploid just like a, a plant. If you look at a plant, it's a diploid, unless you're talking about ferns and mosses, that's a whole other different story. Um, but if you're talking about a plant or a human or a zebra, that is a diploid organism, right? Fungi are different. Fungi exist mainly as either monocaryons in nature or dicaryons. And that rare event where these two things fuse together, which is called karyogamy, okay, so can, I don't, so this, uh, the next thing here, the dicaryon thing can undergo what's called karyogamy. So you see that gammy thing coming back here. Um, so kary, I don't know if you guys can see that. That's karyogamy. Anyway, that's a whole other sheet of paper and I don't want to get into that. Um, the one more point I want to make is, number one, that fungi are different. Number two is if you're breeding, you have to isolate ends and ends or you just put them on a, on a sheet. So, so when we do what's called double swabbing or sometimes the ghetto swabbing thing, you essentially, instead of starting out with uh, monocaryons that are in already a vegetative state, you just start off with spores. So you could, again, have spores here. You could just have a, a haploid spore. Remember I said there's a, there's a haploid? You could have a, um, you know two haploid spores. You put these together, do 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 uh, colors getting messed up and you end up with the same result the difference is here you don't really know because what happens if you get two green ones or you get two blue ones and then we can get into other things there's the whole mon mon daimon buller phenomenon i don't even want to get into that you guys this is a little this is believe it or not this is like the simplest version of this um you can talk about the attributes of the uh the kind of double swabbing ghetto swabbing you can put the spores in a solution and get them in close proximity. The problem here is you're, you're not really sure, you know, did this one, did the light green and the blue one go together like we obviously did here, or did two light green or two blue ones go together, right? That's the problem with this. That's really the only problem. <clears throat> it's a lot simpler. Um, the other problem is down here when you have the N plus N, right? Is this a green N and a green N? Or it's a blue N and a blue N, or it's a 
green N and a blue and you get the point, right? So this is where people talk about verifying things. That is a whole other series of videos. Um, and we're gonna have to do, some people are gonna have to do some serious explanation when it comes down to verification of crosses. And, and again, that's more like a two hour video. I don't even wanna get into it right now. Um, so the point is here, fungi are different. You've got two haploid gametes. They come together, they fuse, they form a dicarion, and then you can, like I said, look in your bio book for the rest of that life cycle. And I think that's it, you guys. Um, uh, yeah, there was one more thing I was gonna mention up here. Um, the actual process of isolating these monocarions, that's again, uh, some of the videos I've made that I've, I've showed like several ways, actually three, slightly different ways. There's the spore drop method, there's the old serial dilution method, there is the grab and drag, or uh, let's, uh, can I call it the grand drag? That's what somebody else called it. <laughs> um, not to be egotistical or anything, the grab and drag. There's also uh, basically the, the sort of the, like ghetto dilution, which I showed in a video too, which is essentially serial dilution, which uh, but you don't need to do it like 1x, 10x, 100x. You can just pretty much put spores in any kind of sterile liquid and shake them and, and play them out. So again, that's a whole other series of videos that I'll probably be making for, well, the rest of my life, you guys. So if you missed something in this one, don't worry. Um, send me a message and uh, I'll just make another video. I plan on doing this for, for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, the, the foreseeable future, let's just say. Anywho, uh, I will talk to y'all later. See you next video. Hope that maybe explains a little bit or maybe just makes more questions. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I guess have a good, good day, night, weekend, whatever it is. Bye-bye.